Kyle Dewis got fired. <laughs> That's what we're here to talk about. It's been... Or, like, I, I guess not renewed. Not renewed. Because if he doesn't have a contract, you can't really get fired, right? Fired is a harsh word for it, for sure. But, yeah. But also he's... basically what happened. <laughs> exactly. He's not back with the team. Brendan Shannon decided not to offer an extension to him after... Just a whole wild timeline of events that doesn't yeah. really make sense. I, I don't understand it. I don't know how we got to this place. Yeah, we're going to break it down a bit. I, it's very, well, I kind of understand it now. Do you want to start with just, do you think it's a good decision that they are not bringing back Kyle Dubas? And do we want to start, I guess, with the timeline as well then? So Shanahan basically explained it like he wanted to bring him back. They didn't talk about it directly together the entire season. He wanted to bring him back since the trade deadline, pretty much. Like he said, like, they were uh, whatever was still up in the air. Once he did the trade deadline, he was like, I liked everything he did. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of fans felt, I think. Mm-hmm. And then he was kind of just like, uh, yeah, let, let's get this done. Yeah. And then Dubas had his media availability. Which Shanahan didn't want him to have, he said in there somewhere. He, he, like, he said, I'm not going to go talk to the media until yes. we have something resolved. And he didn't think Shanahan, or he didn't think Dubas should have either. Mm-hmm. But he was kind of just like, he Dubas wanted to. I understood that. He explained yeah. why that the other people in the organization were having to be accountable. And he felt he should too. And I think that, and he was like, that's fair. And that's fair that Shanahan, I think all of that seems pretty fair. Completely reasonable, no problems yet. And then Dubas talked about just the, the, I don't want to use the word strain, strain's not the right word, but just everything that comes with being the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs, the pressure it puts on your family, and that really hit home. And when Shanahan heard that, he started to have different feelings as far as, and it wasn't only that, it was other things that Dubas said, but um, just not being fully committed to being the GM of the Leafs next season. Yeah. And then basically he says, he then goes on where he goes like, yeah, from then on, I pretty much had to start thinking, okay, well, who else could there be? Mm -hmm. Then he's like, he kind of almost like alludes to, he's kind of like, yeah, Dubas was supposed to get back to me. He said, he's going to call me. Then he kind of doesn't. Then I get this email uh, where basically Dubas is like, I want to be Leafs GM. But then he's kind of saying the same time he got, another uh, proposal from his agent where apparently he said the, the quote is the gap. There was a gap that had risen, which is kind of like he's saying, yeah, this guy wants some money. <laughs> and now we're here. Yeah. Now he's gone. <laughs> he, then he was just like, yeah. So then I was like, no. And I went to his office and fired him. Wild. So, yeah. It doesn't – it's – there are so many questions, and I know there's been a lot of speculation online, too, where people are like, did Dubas want full power, and is that what led to this going off the rails? I don't know how much there is to read into that. There, are, I've seen some people say, like, what Dubas said in his press conference was he trying to – use it as not as like a as leverage but a negotiating tactic, tactic. Where it's like exactly you can prove yourself loyal to the fan base but still be yep. like hey i'm not coming back for sure guys exactly uh which i don't know i'm not gonna speculate on that because i don't know enough about the guy's personal life exactly I'll, the one thing i will say is in terms of we initially said like is this a dumb decision is this a good decision whatever if flat out just you said who do you want the gm of the toronto maple leafs to be next year i would take kyle dubas which so don't love it, <laughs> but uh, but it's more. Uh, I also get like that. It's a pretty crazy thing to do. Like to you're like you're basically a lot of people like kind of. There's a bunch of tweets out there about stuff like this, but basically where like you know your employer's watching. You're pretty much like I don't know if I want to work here anymore. That doesn't fly at a lot of places. Like I get why. Then you're kind of like. Okay, like, I get why Shanahan is immediately like, I got to start looking. Like, this could be a terrible scenario that I'm in. I still, like, we don't know what we're going to do with the coach. We have all these contract negotiations coming up. We got to start thinking of some stuff. Again, I'm just, I'm not saying anything. But then I get that, where I've been in a space where, like, you you think one thing. Something quickly changes that. And then all these options start coming up. And you're like, okay and then maybe a, a, this big dollar coming out uh, this big dollar amount comes through or something like that and you're kind of just like well now i've been thinking about these other options like why am i paying this guy such a crazy amount when like this does actually seem like a decent option it's not like um 
they didn't win. Like there is at the end of the day results. And like, it's not like they blew it away. I, I personally believe like Kyle Dubas has set up like an incredible infrastructure there. And, and just like, it's the whole team and it's Shanahan too did it, but I feel like it's the most important thing is keeping that together. So I just worry about like, does that fracture other things? And it could. And Pierre Lebrun reached out to Kyle Dubas after the press conference and he said he's not commenting on it right now. There's going to be a time and place. So there could be more to the story, obviously, that we don't know from his side of things. And I'm sure that'll all come out. But the drama. The drama <laughs> The drama's brewing. But to your point and just answering the question, do you think it was a bad move or not? Twitter seems divided. I feel like the analytics hockey world and people that are more about process over results have looked at this decision and said, yeah, I don't agree with it. And I think Dubas was the right person for the job, despite not getting the results. And then there's the other side of it who are just looking at the results purely. And then also bringing up things like the trades and his trade record, yeah. as far as some of the maybe questionable decisions he's made. I think um, I kind of land somewhere in between that. Cause yeah. it's like, I, I think that realistically there are smarter analytical GMs than him. Like the, I think the biggest thing that Dubis did and the, what you would really give him credit for is building a really good team. Yeah. And like, like when you look at Brandon Pridham and the guys that like the, the, the everybody always talks about their cap negotiation and, uh, or not negotiate their cap, uh, navigation. Yeah. And finagling. Yeah. Yeah. There's like so many moves constantly yeah. just of like people going up and down and up and down just to try to make things work. And, uh, yeah, that's one of the guys that I'm looking at. Like, mm -hmm. is how what's his relationship with Kyle Dubas? Is that something? Obviously, Shanahan said he'll be leaning a lot on Pridham as this kind of like, I guess, an interim GM almost. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I hope guys like him stay because he's clearly been a pretty valuable asset for for the team. And um, I don't like. But all I mean is, I think there, I think there are smarter analytical GMs out there, like and maybe not even GMs, but that Eric Tulski guy who like consider is widely considered one of the best. Is that the hurricanes hurricanes assistant, assistant GM. GM. Yeah, yeah. And he's been with the hurricanes for a long time. Again, you look at that team and conference finals again, exactly how, and how well they're built and how many people they get that you're like, Oh, I wanted that guy. Yeah. Like, like there's so many players that they just kind of snag for a million yeah, I know. bucks. It was like that. You knew when they signed him, he was going to be a great it player. He was going to be great. And, yeah. and then, and they've drafted really well. And I think there's, there's a lot to like there. And there's things like that, that like, it's not an absolute disaster. I think what really decides if this is going to be a dumb move or not is who Shanahan replaces him with. Right. Do you also think too, that, so as far as, deciding if this is going to be a disaster do you think what happens with the core as well decides that whether this move leads to let's say austin matthews not wanting to resign if a relationship is fractured because of it if the direction of the team is fractured which not saying it is and it sounds like shanahan called all of the players and talked to them about it he's talked to a bunch of staff members so i'm sure that this probably sucks for some guys but also i'm sure it's not going to be the only reason why if Austin Matthews leaves, that's not going to be why. Yeah. Um, but are you judging it in, in any way on that as well, where if a new guy comes in and it's like, they ship Marner out, they ship Nylander out, Matthews doesn't resign. One of those three things happens. Depends what disaster? they get back. Like that's, that's my whole thing. Cause yeah. I, and funny enough, like how Dubis kind of analyzed the situation in his exit thing, which is really an actual exit interview. Now. <laughs> the, Who would have thought? Yeah, seriously. And, but like, I really do think it's kind of just, yeah, whatever's on the table. Like, people keep throwing around, like, Brad Tree Living's name. And like, why well, don't want him? Because the trade that everybody's referencing that the Leafs should try and do, he was on the losing end of. So, yeah. probably, probably don't get him, you know? Like, I get – I am terrified of Shanahan saying I want an experienced GM. Yeah. Because – and what does experience mean? Does that mean he's been a GM for a long time? Does that mean he's been in an NHL head office for a while? Like, because uh, that could just be, yeah, somebody who's been an assistant GM for a while. Maybe that's still experience of some mm -hmm. kind, but definitely don't love the sound of that. But hey, I'm patient. I'll, I'll, I'll wait and see like who he actually ends up getting. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, yeah, Brandon Pridham even is another guy that like they, they value so much and he's been kind of rumored as targets for other places that Ooh. like if if you're gonna lose this guy would you rather just keep him as gm bring in yeah. someone else you're thinking of to help support him or whatever but uh 
I don't know. It's wild. <laughs> one other question I have for you, too, and I'm sure there are other questions that I can think of, but he also talked about, he was asked, Shanahan was asked about staff and if it's going to be up to the next GM to come in and make any changes if he wants. And he said, yeah, it's going to be largely on the next GM when they come in to make any changes to the staff. So that obviously leads to the question of the head coach and Sheldon Keefe. Keefe's gone. There's yeah. Like, I, you think, like, you mind, think there's like, a zero percent chance? Zero. Because okay. like I don't think anybody that people are already basically thinking yeah. Keefe's gone, and then somebody comes in who's like not his guy is just gonna be like, nah, <laughs> I'm keeping him. Like, oh, that's a that would be a tough start for any GM if you're just gonna like throw your hat in the ring there. But uh, do you think that's the right call? Yeah, I I've been like I I just. Uh, Again, there's some systems things that I don't like love from Keefe, and I just genuinely think that this is a team that should be competing for even higher things than they have. I know they've always finished pretty high in the league and everything, but they've never really threatened for, like, top team in the league. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that they should move on from him. I, 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 I don't know. If too much change at one time is a bad thing, but... I just don't think he'll be there. Like, it's not even really I, – I can't imagine it. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to see, it. like you said, a new GM coming in. He's got all the power, and he's just going to be like, I've got yeah. no relationship with this guy, but I'm going to keep him anyway based it, on the results too. What do you – like, what does the whole situation look like you from, like, an outside fan to be like – like? It's wild. It are, is. Are, do you think, like, what a shit show? <laughs> so – I do and I don't. I guess I want to hear what Dubas has to say first and his side what of the story. What if you never do? Yeah, then I. It sounds it sounds like a bit of a shit show, <laughs> a yeah. bit of it. And I I question Shanahan a little, where it's like that's he is one thing. So like I'm not really gonna be super critical of Shanahan yet. I know a lot of people are like, yeah. this is a very emotional decision you're making after basically criticizing a guy for being emotional in his press conference. Yeah. Um. But, like, I'm not going to throw him under the bus for anything. Like, whatever. He made a decision. I get that, that it's a sketchy thing to do to be, like uh, – and, and, again, I love Kyle Dubas. I wish he was still the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. But I get how, like, that's like a, whoa, like, well, yeah. what's going on here? Absolutely. And But now it's Shanahan more just, like, Dubas was the one taking a lot of the brunt of all the criticism for a long time. And now – It'll be Shanahan. Exactly. Re I, I think regardless he's of maxed. what happens with this GM. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe the GM, GM goes with Shanahan when it happens, but if this yeah. GM doesn't work, it's Shanahan on the hot seat. It's his it's his show now, so to speak. And if the power struggle thing was actually a real thing, if he brings in someone, it's like, okay, this is a guy I don't want to say a placeholder, but Shanahan's calling the shots. He's been here since day one and now his hot seat gets a little hotter, especially if like if Keefe's gone, if Dubas is gone, there's no one else left if the results continue to just be first or second round exits. Which is a weird decision because I think it, like just in terms of job security, I think he was safer with Dubas there. If Absolutely. that makes sense, if you extend Dubas, yeah. it's like two three years it doesn't work. Dubas probably goes, and I feel like Shanahan's still safe. Because, I think so like, too. Shanahan still I think is uh, largely thought of as like changing the culture of the Leafs and things like that, which is not necessarily hockey operations. So you don't really get into the nitty gritty of like, Oh, did they win or lose and whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, again, maybe he evaluates himself differently and I don't know how the board evaluates him, but I, I just think that when I think to the Toronto Maple Leafs of 10, 15 years ago, like just an absolute disaster tire fire of a team. And the when Shanahan came in, they weren't anymore. No, which, <laughs> which is incredible to say the least. And he's managed to oversee a lot of these talented players coming in and getting extended. And I mean, Dubas is guy into the guy that I mean, Dubas wasn't there when Marner or Matthews came in, right? Yeah, he was. Or he was. Okay, but not as but not as the GM. Yes. But either way, I mean, like Shanahan signs off on everything anyway, and so you know he's in the ear of anyone who's who's making the final quote unquote decision, and like he's as big a part of this as anything. So like you said, makes sense that when he came in, they started succeeding, and I'm sure they're going to succeed regardless of who's there. It's just what level are they going to succeed? And the the one thing I'm scared about is the one thing I really love about the Leafs right now is they are a very forward thinking organization. And yeah. I feel like you want them to keep going with that. And the one thing, like, again, going back to the experience thing, I just worry that like, why, 
And again, this is kind of media speculation, but he then backed it up by kind of saying like, we're going to experience is a big benefit for this. So like that just terrifies me because you think of all the best GMs in the league recently and pretty much like most of them are first time GMs. Yep. Like former players, Ron Francis in Carolina. (laughs) We're not in Carolina. Ron Francis in Seattle. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, but I, I just funny. No, though. I know yeah. we, we 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 crucified him after one year, yeah, and then, yeah. um, but but you can go all over. And it's guys with not a lot of experience as well. Like Breezewa didn't have any GMing experience. He watched Stevie Y though, and Stevie Y. I was gonna say, guy. but Stevie Y in Tampa, exactly. First time GM. Like I, I don't know the groundwork. Yeah, I'm hey. Like the the one name I saw that was like oh like if I because I don't know about his capabilities in the position whatever but like imagine Jason Spezza is the GM of the Leafs. That's an interesting <laughs> guy though, and it's one of those ones too. And it, it's funny because you're just I, gonna see like the biggest stick room in the world ever <laughs> just like come up in the Leafs and like everybody's got to have six sticks and like Bobby Hastings' job gets way harder. That's <laughs> like, our as content creators. That is our <laughs> yeah, dream yeah. right there. But it's interesting because the experience thing kind of goes hand in hand with. I think people think Dubis was like too analytical. Where you look at some of the guys he brought in, especially with trades, and it doesn't really match up to that thinking of. Um, no, that would just, be the only thing I didn't like. Really, yeah, is that it exactly. It felt like they were kind of sold as this analytical organization, and they really like a lot of the decision making wasn't really that. I no. I still don't think like uh, like they gave up a first for Nick Felino. Yeah, yeah, that's that was a tough one, and and like, there, but and every GM is gonna have that, but it's it's a guy where those are guys that everyone is gonna say you need those guys to win in the playoffs. Yeah, right. And I, I would say like if you were to look at Dubis's like real strengths, it was more finding value in free agents, and it was kind of like navigating the cap, I guess, in a way. Which again, a lot of the credit does go to Brandon Pridham too. Which so that's I I do like him a lot. I feel like that's like a it's your dream guy. I don't know if it's my dream guy, but it, I think, kind of shows a level of stability in the organization. Like I was saying, I a lot of the I, I consider Kyle Dubas a Leafs legend now, and yes. uh, and He's got the stamp. yeah, and and I just think that like his legacy will really be what he left this organization as, and how like okay, well if if they go on and win in the next three, four years, and it's not with any real significant change in the team, some turnover in the bottom six, a couple defensemen change, whatever. I think you still, I'll look back and think like, yeah, like this is Kyle Dubas built this, you know, yeah. like, and like there was somebody came in, tweaked some things and really made it work. But, um, and so in my mind, because I still kind of like the team and I like a lot of the structure there, uh, having something that would be consistent would be interesting to me. So that's, and it would be less chaotic for sure. Because yeah. like you said, I'm sure the rest of the hockey world and you're seeing it on Twitter is looking at the Leafs situation right now. Like what the hell just happened They're They've lost their GM seemingly out of nowhere. Everyone thought he was going to be extended and now you might lose your coach. And now there are all kinds of off season questions that, a new GM has to come in and answer. Well, the Matthews thing is still, I didn't really address that directly when you said it, but like Chris Johnson kind of earlier in the year speculated that like Matthews and Dubas are really close. And like, that could be a significant factor in whether or not he resigned is like, is Dubas still there? And who knows things change in a year. And obviously when you're really faced with a decision like that, it can pretty easily be like, well, no, I still want to resign, whatever. But like that terrifies me. And I know like, I, uh, yeah, I, the one thing I will say is I think Brendan Shanahan came out here and pretty much said, if this was about money, no, it's not, it's not been good enough. You're not getting like a massive raise on this. Like you deserve to still be the GM of the organization and he wanted him to be clearly. And, but if he's coming out and saying like, if it really was something to do with money, Brendan Shanahan came out, was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to, kind of go back and forth with this we gave you our offer that's it Mm -hmm. be really interested to see if that's the same approach they have to austin matthews mitch martin or william nylander right because like that if that's not kind of a top 10 down mentality i don't know what is and it's uh, ironic too because i think that's the one thing dubas probably gets criticized most for by fans is he didn't put his foot down and pandered to Marner and Nylander and Matthews during negotiations and didn't get more years out of the contract and gave him all this money. And it would be pretty ironic if that's what <laughs> the opposite was. Yeah, Shanahan. somebody ends up cutting him off because yeah. he's like, well, no, this is what you should have done. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, 
Could be a very interesting offseason. Best GM opening in how many years, though? As far as, like, a guy coming in, is this a dream job? As as close to a dream is scenario it? as you can think. I don't know if it is, I guess. I'm it's asking you. terrifying. Like, because you got to go in and be like, I'm going to make... No matter what you do, it feels like a massive decision. Because either you trade some of the main guys or you do nothing. And if you're doing nothing, you come in and everybody's like, this guy didn't do anything. Like, why did you even bring him in? Get rid of this guy because, like, nothing changed. And, like, why is this any improvement? Whatever. And then if you trade someone away, it's obviously always the risk. We've seen it with several Leafs players now. Yep. Or, like, Nazem Kadri. Yeah, like, that That was probably a pretty emotional trade. I remember all the stuff going around about how they were sick of him getting suspended in the playoffs. And it's like, yeah. well, that didn't work out. So. Man. The one, one other question I want to ask you as a Leafs fan, because this just popped into my head now. Okay, before, like, you're saying Kyle Dubas stays – Percent chances in your mind that one of the core four were traded if he had stayed and now that there's going to be a new GM? Because I think what you said is is pretty telling of the pressure that someone coming into the spot is going to face and the kind of hunger from the fan base over the years of the same results to see someone moved off. And Dubas's approach has always been, we're not trading anyone, we're running it back. Now he's gone, Keefe might be gone. You're getting new voices in. It almost feels like the next step is to trade someone. So I guess percent chances before if Dubas stayed and now that a new GM um, is going to be in town that some one of those core four will be traded. So I'm going to kind of split it. Okay. If my guess would be if they bring in an NHL GM that is like a former GM, um, for lack of a better example, I don't think this would happen at all. But yeah. like Brian Burke. Would Mark Bergevin. Like yeah, like these guys – they will trade somebody absolutely. Okay. I think like just as a statement thing and just how people think of like hockey in in that uh, group. Yep. I think they would absolutely trade someone. I think uh, if it's someone that's newer and is more forward thinking and kind of just can take a bigger macro view of the team and kind of just be like, well. I think it would be the exact same likelihood as Dubas because I just think if if they get the right guy and they get someone that is really just interested in making the team as good as they can, I think they come in and they go, if a deal comes up that is good enough to trade one of these incredible players, then I'll do it. And, but I really hope there's not someone that comes in and says, we got to move them. You know, we got to move someone guys. It's got to be different stuff. God. I've seen so many examples of that not working out, but you can see it on every every tweet or reddit thread that like fans are just sick and tired of of the same result obviously and they tie it and attach it to this core four and so i'm sure it'd be welcomed among leafs fans but i mean it might make your team a lot worse you know the one trade i'm really i've really gotten into since uh like you you, you saw our whole trade yeah. video right yeah, yeah, yeah the one thing that i'm like very interested in oh, no. is like i love adam fantilli and like if there's some way not matthews but any, any other one other player and uh, maybe something else, if they can make something work that they can get a Fantilli and maybe another prospect package, that is something I am very interested in. So Marner? I, w- <laughs> I would probably, if, if there was some kind of deal that came up where it was like, like the one that I keep seeing is, or actually it's more just my buddy Alex texting me, is he said he wants – Marner for Fantilli and Drysdale or something like that. And he was like, and you can throw Nick Robertson in or something. And I was like, I don't think Anaheim does that. But, uh, but I was, I thought I said something more like is a deal of like Marner for Fantilli and Sasha Pasajov. Like who's like one of their prospects who's very skilled, but kind of big boomer bust basically. And like guys like that, I would be very interested in something like that. But just because I've always said as a fan, I love the idea of potential. And Fantilli just feels like such a high potential guy, and uh, and it kind of extends your winning window while giving you some more opportunity to play around with the cap. So that's something that I was very interested in. It's interesting. But, uh, I feel like that's the only way you come close to 
and you might not ever, but come close to winning a Marner trade. Yeah, it, it's got to yeah. be a prospect because I don't think there's – unless you're trading Marner for Dreisaitl, which is not going to happen, yeah, no. then you're probably not winning that trade if there's not a prospect that's so highly touted that you got to give it like five, ten years to play out. Yeah. Like I've seen like, – It's also scary. <laughs> yeah. It's scary, but no, but like Fantilli, I'm – I mean, I love You're all Fantilli. in on him. Yeah, wow. So like, love I'm, it. I'm into that. I, but it's also like – Dude, is is Marner does Marner make Anaheim a playoff team? Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's my where I kind of think I don't know if that even is really a starter. Yeah. But I don't know. We're just rambling. No, no. <laughs> these are all interesting conversations, and until a GM is named, and even after a GM is named, it's going to be just fascinating to see what the next months look like this summer because the uh, Leafs, like if we thought they were a wild card going into the off season, as far as what they can do. With Dubis and Keith still on the squad, and now Dubis is gone and Keith likely out the door, what the hell are they gonna do? Anything's possible. Center of the hockey world, right here. The center of the hockey world. Okay, I'm just about to post this video of me and Luca talking about this, and at one point I mentioned that I'd love for Jason Spezza to be the GM, but apparently he quit. So now I'm even more worried about the whole structure of their organization. So, I guess we'll see what happens.